This is running 50 fish. And I want to show you how much this hardware acceleration really matters. I'm going to pull this down, and by way of comparison, I've got an iPhone 4 here running the current build of Safari. And the Safari web browser is not taking advantage of hardware acceleration, so you really get a sense for how dramatic the difference is when we use the full power capability of the device. You saw it on the PC, you've tried it yourself if you've downloaded i9, and now you can see the difference on the phone. So that is a first real-world example of the performance difference. Now, I'm going to uh, use IE9 here and navigate over to another site and just give you another example of what you saw in the video. Uh, one of the sites that was shown in the video, and all those sites you can try yourself if you download IE, all those sites in the video are part of the um, IE9 test drive site. And one of the ones you saw was IMDB. So this is a mock-up of an HTML5 IMDB site that uses animations and rich user experience. And I want to show you how it looks and feels very smooth, just like what you saw on the desktop. I can touch these movies and navigate around. I can push the play button. And because the hardware acceleration makes this experience so smooth, the user, although they've just visited a website, it's almost indistinguishable from the experience you would get running a client app on the device. Um, now similarly, one of the other things that's cool about this, let me move my way around the carousel again here, um, is that the HTML5 standard supports a wide range of things, but one of the more valuable and important ones it supports is native support for video. Lots of websites today use Flash and other plugins to implement video on websites. And in our case, we don't support many of those sites. But with IE9 and its standards-based support for the video tag, sites like this IMDB site enable native support for video just using HTML. So in this case, I'm going to touch the item for Despicable Me. We're going to hit the web service here, the website, start downloading this video and playing it. You'll see, just a second, if we still have our connectivity, you'll see uh, streaming H.264 video in high definition. And maybe we don't have enough connectivity for you to actually <coughs> see this, but trust me, we typically would show streaming high definition H.264 video. I'm going to actually go back and try that one more time and see if we get lucky on the second try. <coughs> Yeah, we're not going to get lucky on the second try. Well, unfortunately, that didn't work. As I said, this is preliminary, not final code. We'll get all these kinks worked out before we ship it and make it available to users. But now what I want to do is switch over and give you one more demo example of the software that's going to be coming in this free update later this year. And that is walk you through a multitasking scenario. As Steve said, later on this year, in 2011, we'll make this update available for all Windows Phone 7 users who will then get added support for multitasking of third-party apps. Today, Windows Phone 7 multitasks our own first-party code, but generally we don't multitask third-party apps because we want to make sure the user has a very predictable long life in their battery. When apps run in the background, if you're not careful about how you architect it, they can often spin and use the CPU and other resources so the battery is drained. What we're going to ship is a multitasking approach that we think does the right balance of protecting the user's battery while letting multitasking happen. So I'm going to start up this demo by running an app. Um, the app that I'm going to run is called Rise of Glory. It's an Xbox Live game that's now available on the marketplace. If you have a Windows phone, you can try this yourself. It's pretty fun. This is a World War I uh, fighter plane simulation. And once the game launches, I'm going to play the part of the Red Baron flying my triplane over Europe while I'm being attacked by other fighters. So the game is loaded, I'll touch the screen, and here we go. So you can see, I am, let me turn the volume up here, let's see if we can get some audio. There we go. I am flying my plane around, and today if I were playing this game with Windows Phone 7, if I wanted to make a phone call or send a text, if I navigate away from the game, we essentially put it into a, a deep hibernation which takes a few seconds to resume. So I'm going to do the same thing now. Let's assume I wanted to make a phone call. I press the start button, I'll navigate around, I'll do my thing, make my phone call, and now I want to go back to the game. We have a convenient back button. Today, if I were to do that on Windows Phone 7, for third-party apps, it might take four seconds. For a game, sometimes a little longer, maybe even up to as much as 10 seconds. But with multitasking, the user gets an instant return to the game. So here I go, I'm going to push the back button back. There's our animation. Boom, we're in the game, and it pauses for me, so I can press the continue button. Very, very fast, effectively instant. 
So I'm going to do it again. I'll press start. We navigate away. I can go do something else on the phone. I can run other apps, whatever I want. When I push back to come back to that app, voila, I can press continue and I'm flying my plane again. So we're adding a new user interface element later this year, which lets people have a task switching view from their back button. You could press back, back, back to go to apps you've been running, or you can press and hold back, which is what I just did, and we'll present a view of all the applications that you've been running recently. So you can see here, we set this phone up before the demo. I ran email, I ran Fruit Ninja, I ran Groupon on the phone. And I want to give you an example now. When you put these things together, I can switch between games incredibly fast. So when I'm going to choose Fruit Ninja, I'm live, I'll unpause the game, and here I am, killing fruit. So you see how I'll do that? Now let's go back to our Rise of Glory, press and hold back. Navigate over to Rise of Glory, and now I'm flying my plane. So uh, for those um, those teenagers with really long attention spans who want to try to play two games at a time, it will now be possible with fast task switching and our new task switching menu. Okay, I have one more multitasking scenario I want to show you, and then I'm going to wrap up this part of the demo. Another really key thing that people have raised as something they'd like to see on Windows Phone 7 that we don't support today is third-party music applications being able to play music as you navigate around the phone. If you use our built-in music application, it works okay, but for third parties, so far, we don't support that. So what I'm going to do is give you a real example of that. I'm going to scroll down here and launch Slacker. Slacker is a free music service that gives me access to a whole bunch of radio stations. So I've launched the Slacker app, and I'm going to touch today's hits to start playing a streaming radio station. There we go. And now I'm playing the song 100 Pianos by July for Kings. Today on Windows Phone 7, with a third-party app, if I navigate away from the app, the music will stop. Not so anymore with this multitasking support. If I press the press and hold the back button, you'll see again the Slacker application moves into the task view. I can pan over and pick another app. In this case, I'll choose my email. So now here I am running email, and the music is still playing uninterrupted, just as a user would expect. If I want to go back to the Slacker app because I want to change to a different radio station or something, I can hit the back button to go right back to where I just came from, and now I can navigate around and do something with Slacker. Um, this scenario keeps working in lots of different interactions. If I press the start button, of course, as you would expect, music continues to run. And we've tried to make sure the user experience stays really simple and predictable for people. So if you want to turn the volume down, the system volume controls work. And right there you can see the track and artist is shown. I can skip forward, I can skip back, or, as is appropriate in this demo situation, I can just hit the pause button to stop that music <laughs> in a way that's very consistent between our built-in experience and third-party apps. So all of these features that I've described will be coming in a free update in 2011 for all Windows Phone 7 users.